Welcome to Word Bites, friend, where I share bite-sized messages that bring big-time changes to you. And I am Wumi Ademola. Beloved, we began last time a powerful seven-week series on prayer based on Luke chapter 11, where in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus reveals seven powerful keys to having a passionate, productive, and powerful prayer life. If you want to get answers to prayer all the time, if you want prayer to be something you really enjoy, you need to engage the keys that Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. And last time I shared key number one, principle number one, which is when you pray, you need to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, with the help of the Holy Spirit. Jesus started out by saying, when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven. Now, without further ado, let's talk about principle number two. And it's found in the second part of verse two of Luke chapter 11. And it reads, hallowed be your name. So the next thing Jesus said, after he said, Pray, saying, Our Father. The next thing he said was, Say, hallowed be your name. Now, the word hallow means to honor, to hold in high esteem, to regard as holy. So, principle number two is this. Prayer must start and end by honoring the Father in thanksgiving, praise, and worship. I'm going to say that again. The second powerful prayer principle is this. When you pray, you need to pray beginning and also ending by honoring the Father in thanksgiving, in praise, and in worship. The Bible says in Psalm 100 verse 1, and let's read verse 2 as well. It says, make a joyful shout to the Lord. All you lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And then it now says further down, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. So the way you enter into God's presence, the way you approach him, you begin with thanksgiving. Be thankful to God and blessing him. You do not enter the presence of God bombarding him with your prayer request, but instead you come blessing him with thanksgiving praise and worship. Again, we're told in Philippians 4, 6, it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And so you present your request to God on a platter of thanksgiving. You know, before you serve food, what's the first thing you do? You set out the plates. You do not present the food until you have first set the table, you know, put out the plate. And so in the same way, thanksgiving is a platter, is a plate upon which you present your prayer request unto God. You don't just go to God and say, God, I need this, do this, do that. No, you come, you enter into his presence with thanksgiving, blessing him in praise and worship. Again, we're told, Colossians 4, 2, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. So no matter how desperate your situation is, no matter how desperate your request Never, ever start your prayer by making demands on God. Instead, begin and also end prayer with thanksgiving. Remember when our Lord Jesus Christ, he faced the desperate situation two times. He faced the desperate situation on how to feed multitudes when he had barely nothing. First, in the example, when he needed to feed 5,000 people, and all he had was five loaves of bread and two fish, and also when he needed to feed 4,000 people and all he had was, uh, you know, seven loaves and just a few fish. In both instances, you're going to notice Jesus didn't start praying by making demands to the Father by saying, Hey, Father, look at all these people. You need to help me. You need to help me. No, the Bible tells us in both cases that the Lord, he began by giving God thanks and by blessing God. And what was the result? As a result, we're told in scripture in those two uh, miracles that the five loaf and two fish supernaturally became multiplied to feed the 5,000 
even with having left over. And the same situation happened with the, in the feeding of the uh, 4,000. So no matter how desperate your situation is, it, whether it's an emergency, uh, just take time to pause and say, Father, I thank you. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ did the same thing when he was at the tomb of Lazarus. I, I don't know what can be more desperate when you're in front of a dead friend. He needed the Father by his power to raise back to life his dead friend. But our Lord Jesus Christ didn't start by saying, God, raise Lazarus. You need to raise Lazarus from the dead. No, the Bible tells us in John chapter 11, verse 41, he says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. So always begin prayer and also end prayer with thanksgiving, praise, and worship. And so we see in another version of the Lord's Prayer, in Matthew uh, 6, verse 13, Jesus ended the Lord's Prayer with the phrase, the kingdom and power and praise belong to you forever. So it's an established principle to get as a speedy as to prayer and to get God's intervention in your situation, start and end prayer with thanksgiving, praise, and worship. So there you have it, principle number two. Thank you so much for watching today. I do believe you were blessed. Uh, please come back next time. Remember, I said do not miss any single episode. In case you missed the last one, I'm going to include the link to last uh, week's episode in the description. So come back next week for as we look into principle number three. God bless you.